What's going on guys, I'm Prox and in this video I want to show you how I went from 80 FPS to almost 120 FPS in Satisfactory Update 8 using the same video settings. I don't want to call this a guide because, well, I'm not really aware of uh, how much impact this is going to have on different systems, but to me it improved FPS dramatically. Well, in some scenarios almost doubled the performance without any super obvious and really noticeable visual fidelity changes. This is a new save that I started just like an hour ago and as you can see I'm getting like 70 to 80 FPS depending on where I am and where I'm looking at but this is fine. I mean this is playable, uh, everything feels smooth and snappy and responsive but the scenario changes dramatically when it comes to loading up more populated worlds so this is not really a sustainable performance measure. Now if you look at the video settings I'm running Textures, shadows, and anti-aliasing on high, which are really one of the more important settings when it comes to getting a nice, clear, and crisp image, which has a bit of detail. And the rest, like post-processing and all that other stuff, is between medium to low settings at 1440p resolution, running on Direct X12 and anti-aliasing mode on TAA. I would prefer TSR, but unfortunately, it is really heavy. <coughs> it is really heavy on VRAM, as it says right at the bottom here. So we're gonna go around that and use TAA instead. And spoiler, this is where most of our optimization is going to come in. And then lastly, global illumination off. While I do think that it does add a lot of depth and detail and more uh, realism and fancy visuals to the game, it is not really a necessity for me in regular gameplay. So I'm going to keep this setting off. Of course, you can play around with it and try having the setting on. You will probably get a little bump in performance anyway, but for me, it's not really necessary, as I said. So, empty world, 70 to 80 FPS, that's cool. But now let's load into a more populated world from my last playthrough video, and we'll see how things go from there. Now that we are in a more realistic factory scenario, which has close to 400 machines running at this moment, uh, has a lot of open belts and whatnot, so you know, it's visually pretty loaded. And we're getting, what, 50 to sometimes 60 FPS in some places if we're not looking at too much. You know, running around has some micro stutters and maybe a lower FPS, which is not really that enjoyable of an experience when playing a game. In terms of micro stutters, I'm going to try to eliminate them as much as I can, but it is not really doable because of the way the game loads. So there's not really anything you can do about it other than maybe upgrade your hardware, which is not the focus of this video. So I'm gonna do the best I can to improve this without sacrificing visual fidelity too much. So the next step is to obviously go and do some setting changes and for that I gotta close off the game. Okay, now that we're at our desktop, we gotta go and open up any folder and go to our local app data. We can do that by typing percent local app data percent sign. From there, we're gonna need to find factory game, go to saved and go to config and then windows. Here we have one file that we want to focus in particular and that is engine.inif. If we open it up, we see there's not much here, but we can add stuff to this file to improve performance. And we're gonna do that in a way that is pretty much the same as launching up the game and typing in a bunch of console commands. You can back it up if you want. You can do that by just renaming the file with dot backup and it is just going to be your local copy in the same file directory with an extension backup. And don't worry if you delete the file even while the game is running, it is going to be automatically restored whenever you launch the game next or when you close the game if you had it running in the first place. So I'm just going to delete it and I'm going to restore the backup that I made with the changes that I have been working on. So now that I have a restored engine file, we can look at it and we see there's a lot more stuff going on in here. So we have a new category called engine.engine, .engine, then we have garbage collection, and then we have system settings. And just a quick overview, engine.engine .engine is basically just for turning on FPS smoothing, which isn't particularly effective if you're getting really low FPS, but after we optimize the game in system settings, the FPS is going to go a little bit higher so we can better take advantage of the FPS smoothing. Garbage collection is basically just limiting the amount of objects in the game and altering the way that game dumps unused files. And system settings is, as I said, where the majority of optimization is going to happen. These four are probably the most important settings in the entire file. 
we're going to be using temporal anti-aliasing at four samples rather than default, which is eight. And this is just so we reduce the amount of flickering at longer distances, especially on small objects like steps, cables, railing, whatever have you. Then we're going to enable upsampling at the quality of three. And then we're going to use screen percentage 80. Then we're going into texture streaming. And to me, it is really a feature that is worth turning on, especially when I have only six gigs of VRAM. And at this point, this is going to be pretty much all we got to change. So let me just save the changes real quick and we're ready to launch the game back up. Okay, so the first thing we're looking at is the empty world. I'm gonna try and have these two images side by side so we can have uh, a comparison to do. But to me, it looks pretty much the same. And we're rocking 90 to 100 FPS rather than 70 to 80, which is a pretty substantial improvement. And you see, we still have good shadows. We still have pretty good lighting, even though it's nighttime for some reason. There's not much else to see here other than FPS counter. Because, well, visual fidelity is pretty much the same, anti-aliasing works just great, we don't see any weird artifacts or whatever, and this is a win in my book. So now let's see how these settings hold up in a more populated save. Okay, so we loaded in into our factory with nearly 400 machines, and as you can see, the FPS never really dunks below 60. The stuttering is almost completely eliminated, other than crossing a border to a new biome or or a bigger map part where it has to load a bunch of new textures in. And this is where the texture streaming really comes in handy in terms of smoothing the spike of the game having to load a bunch of new textures. Another thing worth mentioning is that in the factory setting where you have a lot of straight edges and uh, a lot of sharp edges and lines, the flickering is kind of more obvious, especially when you look at the bottom of belts. So this is a little bit annoying, but it can be mitigated by setting up the screen percentage setting we talked about earlier to a slightly higher number. The modified engine file is available in my Discord server in the mods channel under Satisfactory, so you can hop on there and download it yourself to see how much of an improvement it is for you. Anyways guys, that's gonna be all for now. Don't forget to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed this one and possibly learned something. And as always, this has been Aprox, thank you for your eyeballs, and I'll see you in the next one.